Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts, mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. King Arthur a Merlin a Guinevere, Knights of the Round Table a Camelot, are the Holy Grail of Excalibur. Contact Report 415 There have been some television shows about Christian relics, for which I would like to know what is true about them. The first question relates to the legendary Grail, a vessel Joseph of Arimathea is said to have used to catch Emmanuel's blood at the crucifixion. This goblet is supposed to work wonders and make one immortal, as well as heal all sicknesses and evils, etc. This is absolute nonsense, for neither does such a grail exist, nor has Joseph of Arimathea caught the blood of Emmanuel in a vessel. That, however, no other human being has done either. This senseless claim was invented fictitiously centuries after the event of the crucifixion, namely by members of a sect that emerged from Emmanuel's already early falsified teaching. And the fact that no blood of Emmanuel was caught in a vessel, rather that the little blood that Emmanuel lost dripped to the ground and seeped away, is perfectly certain, because this was recorded in our annals by the personality of that time Gabriel, the procreating father of Emmanuel. He was direct eyewitness of the real event. Contact Report 469 And all the catastrophes that have occurred worldwide and that have been triggered and brought about by humanity on earth have only happened because the principle of truth, and thus also the creative laws and commandments, have been violated instead of following the truly wise path of effective truth and the teaching of the true prophets, which has been handed down from primeval times as the spiritual teaching, or rather as the teaching of truth, teaching of the spirit, teaching of life. And therefore this truth is also given in the book Goblet of the Truth, of which a first part, namely the teaching of Enoch, was also called Cauldron of Life by the Druid Prince Murden, alias Merlin, and has nothing to do with the alleged grail of Christianity which is based only on lies and deceit, never existed, and in which therefore also the blood of Emmanuel Jesus was not caught by Joseph of Arimathea at his crucifixion. The real grail existed only as a holy place, and in the cauldron of life was locked up the document, a document of the teaching of the true prophet Enoch from the seven row of the Nicodemian. The document was given as a copy of the play Arenin Karaquena the Triple Goddess to the druid Murden the Laughing One, later commonly called Merlin. Murden poured the copy into the chalice that became known as the Cauldron of Life, and Christian adulteration was used to make the Grail, but this is not in any way connected to it, because the Grail was a place with a spring, surrounded by trees and plants, where the druids used to do their meditations. And this Christian Grail adulteration has been handed down from its origin to the present day, but again in another monstrous adulteration which claims that it is the cup or grail of Emmanuel Jesus, from which Emmanuel and his disciples drank at Holy Communion, and in which Emmanuel's blood was collected at the crucifixion by Joseph of Arimathea. This monstrous lie and falsification of the truth also applies to the so-called Holy Lance, with which Emmanuel Jesus was stabbed in the loins by a Roman mercenary on the cross, to ascertain his death. And since this lance has been holy ever since, and since it also contains immense power, which is supposed to make rulers out of the greedy for power, it is highly honored. In truth, however, this lance never touched Emmanuel's loin, for it is a Christian forgery that was not discovered until the 8th century AD. It is also the so-called Turin Shroud, which is supposed to show Emmanuel's Jesus's image but is in fact the death image of an Italian merchant named Caesar Canova, and was made by his brother Luciano Canova, who studied alchemy. Murden, that is to say, Merlin tried to teach the teachings of Enoch through his influence with King Arthur, that is to say, Arthur, who was his protege and pupil, and with the pagan knights of the round table, knights of the round table, but failed miserably, 
because the fierce clan leader Arthur and his pagan knights could not get along with the teaching. So Arthur took possession of the sealed cauldron of life and sank it into the sea by himself. You have also asked Florina to clarify certain things concerning King Arthur and the druid prince Merlin. In my father's Foth records, which he kept about my grandfather, Ezekiel the Mediator, note Billy, I found something that might interest you, and it is this. King Arthur, or Artus, king of the Celts, contrary to today's depiction of having been a hero or the like, was absolutely not a courtly king in shining armor, nor a good-hearted and noble hero. King Artus was a fierce 6th century clan leader, a war king who led his pagan warriors in bloody battles and raids. He was a slaughterer and kept the name the Boar of Cornwall. His knights truly were bloodthirsty, murderous thugs, as you say. Artis himself was Merlin's protege, a pupil of Merlin the Druid, for seven years. Arthur born 4.1. 469 died 11.8. 509 at the Battle of the Camlan Crooked Valley, in a duel with his nephew, the cunning prince Medrout was a brutal and stubborn person for whom a human life meant very little or nothing. Arthur's wife was Gwynwifara Gwanhamara, or Guinevere. White spirit, shining spirit, note, Billy. His father was Uther Tudor, carrying the surname Pendragon, who was already married and impregnated another woman in a most insidious manner and thus procreated Arthur. Arthur's mother was Igerna, who was also married and was the wife of Prince Gorlois. Actually, the liberal Celtic marriage laws did not overvalue lifelong physical fidelity. Thus, while Gorlois, the Cornic duke, was deceived and cheated by the fraud, King Uther and Queen Igerna could engage in a sexual act. The story goes like this. Arthur's father, Uther Tudor Pendragon, fell in love with Queen Igerna of Cornwall, the young and beautiful wife of Gorlois, duke and prince of Cornwall. Egerna, however, was faithful to her husband, so Uther Pendragon sought the support of Merlin and devised an intrigue to abduct the Queen of Cornwall and seduce her. Merlin lured Gorlois away from his castle on a pretext in order for Uther Pendragon to secretly snatch Egerna at night and bring her to Tintagel. A confidant of Merlin, who was also a servant to the Queen Igerna of Cornwall, then administered a drug to her, and she reached a hallucinogenic and will-less state. Igerna was kidnapped from the castle and taken to a certain place where Uther Tudor Pendragon and several male and female druids were already assembled under Merlin's leadership. Inside the circle they formed, Uther and the drugged will-less, Igerna performed the procreation. From their union, Arthur, Artis, Arthas, was born on the 4th of January, 469. Uther Tudor did not leave that matter to rest for long. The very same night he let Igerna's prince consort Gorlois be killed by his own bloodthirsty knights. The plan he devised with Merlin thus ended with complete success, Igerna's husband now out of the way. When Gorlois's dead body was returned to Tintagel, Egerna was already back home, but was now made pregnant by Uther Tudor and was still highly intoxicated by the drug and did not realize what had really happened since she only later learned everything. The sword Kaladvlsch, spoken Kaladvlsch in German, Kier, sparkling sword because it was emitting sparkling or lightning-like blazes, Shimasha radiance. Later Clyburn and falsified to Excalibur in ecclesiastical Latin, was a light lightweight beam weapon in the form of a sword. It was forged and finished on the island of Avalon under the surveillance and the involvement of the Playaranin Keridwena, a sister of my grandfather, Ezekiel. Caridwena gave it as a gift to Merlin, who later handed it to Arthur, who then fought many bloody battles with it.
All of Caradwena's efforts to regain possession of the sword failed because it had been abused. Hence, she was very angry with Merlin, but could not persuade him to demand Arthur's sword back and return it to her. It was only after Arthur's death that the sword was reclaimed by Merlin and returned to the Pliaia Renin Caridwena, after which she left Earth. She had already angrily ceased contact with Merlin at the time when Arthur committed his first murderous deeds with the sword. At Dinas Brand's Sir Castle of Bran, Merlin personally stayed. Dinas Bran Valley was located in the Simru region, where Merlin, the one with great knowledge, was also working. Merlin's real name was Merdin, the Laughing One. Merlin, the druid of Camelot, received his initiation when he was just nine years old. However, he was not a sorcerer, respectively a magician, as Christianity had attributed to him, but a druid widely taught in various fields of knowledge. He was also a bard, a doctor, a teacher, a prophet, a historian, and ultimately the king and prince of druids of the Demetier tribe from South Wales. He taught in the West our Occident, on Pliaranin Caridwena's The Triple Goddess, Billy's Note, Instructions, and had great visionary skills based on his practiced meditations. Merlin's father was King Morvrin, and his mother was a daughter of the king of the Demetier. Merlin's father was also a visionary, and these visionary capabilities led to the evil legend within the Christian world that Merlin was a scion of the devil, a magician, a sorcerer. The naivete and simplicity of the Christian interpretation held that Merlin and his father's paranormal abilities meant that they were satanical, and that father and son were allied with the devil and fathered by him. Merlin was born on the 1st May, 449. He also picked up the sword and fought with it, and he used his skills in military operations and as Arthur's military advisor, contrary to the instruction and wishes of the Playar and Caridwena, however, without becoming morally bankrupt. Merlin also fought with his sword against the warlike Christian intruders who stole into the country through murder and arson, killing off or suppressing the population to spread the Christian faith, conquer the land, and destroy Celtic philosophy and beliefs. After his last fight, when he was 66 years old in year 515 at the lost battle at Arf Dered, Merlin fled and settled down in a remote area in the wilderness of Caledonia in the Cheviot Hills, where he lived as Merdin Wilt Merlin in the wilderness. He lived there for some time and then returned to his hometown, where an old female druid named Ninian, also known as Nimue, joined him and was a good friend to him. When he felt his death approaching, she finally accompanied Merlin on Innes Enli Bardsey Island, which he had chosen as his death place. He died there in the arms of the old druid on the 14th of June 542 at the age of 93, and he was buried by the wise woman in a rocky cave according to his wishes. The knights of the round table were malignant, bloody knights and not heroes, as they are presented today. Merlin, being a seer, made prophetic and foresighted statements of which his dragon prophecy, made at Dinus Emrys Fortress of Emrys or Ambrosius, respectively, is very well known, besides those which he made in the wilderness of Caledonia. Merlin was already contacted in the year 466 by the Plea Renan Caridwena, a sister of my grandfather Ezekiel the Mediator, as I said before. This took place after the High Council decided to convey Enoch's teachings to Merlin, which he was to disseminate in order to contain the barbarism of the Celts so that they would refrain from barbarity and their bloody battles. Merlin, being a Celtic druid, was chosen because the High Council hoped that with his help, King Arthur, who, according to a foresight, was to be born on 4th of January, 469, would transform Enoch's teachings of love, peace, harmony, 
and the freedom and equality for all human beings into reality. The real reason for this undertaking was the Celtic philosophy, which in many ways parallels the teachings of Enoch whose wise, effective, and widespread approach should be implemented to make the Celts give up their degenerated behavior of barbaric killings and fighting battles. Erlen received a copy of Enoch's teachings, being the first part of the Goblet of Truth written on earth, memorized it, and then locked and sealed it in a cauldron. This cauldron was no vessel made of gold, but of bronze and decorated with a ruby the size of a cherry, and three small semi-precious stones, rose quartz, were placed in the shape of a triangle, and in its center the ruby was attached. The 33-centimeter-wide cauldron was meant to collect water from a spring at the grail. The grail itself was a sacred place of a spring, usually located on a mountain that the Celts considered a nature sanctuary and where also a druid's grove was erected that was surrounded by trees and other plants, where the druids meditated in deep consciousness, related interconnection with water, the earth, and plants, as well as with inexhaustibleness of life. These holy places, which have been called the Grail, were intended as places of meditation for the druids, and they existed in many places, wherever druids lived and fulfilled their duties. But at the place with the water source, where also Merlin meditated, a vessel was linked to the well, known as the Cauldron of Abundance, which captured the water located at the divine Caridwin Spring. Merlin, the druid from Camelot, removed the Cauldron of Abundance from its place and replaced it with another vessel, because he put a copy of Enoch's teaching into the cauldron, which he and all druids then called the Cauldron of Life. Merlin presented this cauldron to his protege and pupil Arthur when he was sixteen years old in year 485, after Merlin had thoroughly instructed Arthur and his knighthood in Enoch's teaching, and after Arthur had fought his first battle against Germanic invaders led by the chief Ella. But Arthur and his bloody knights thirsted for blood and vengeance, and they strictly rejected the teachings because they did not want to give up killing and conquest, whereby Arthur thus became very upset and angry at Merlin and cast the gift of the cauldron of life into the sea with his own hands, although he later reconciled with Merlin again. Contact Report 471 I was asked some questions, especially about Caridwena, the sister of your grandfather Ezekiel. Why was she chosen for the task of teaching Merlin the teachings of Enoch? Was she an Ishrish, and why did she make a radiant sword for Merlin, the Excalibur respectively Kaladvulch, which he gave to his disciple King Arthur, who then killed with it in bloody battles? And what role did Merlin play in the murder of King Gorlis of Tintangel? Caridwena was not an Ishrish, but a teacher with regard to some activities, and also a teacher with regard to Enoch's teaching. This teaching activity was decisive in that she was chosen for the task of teaching Merlin in the teaching of Enoch, who, however, did not know that Caridwena was not an earth woman, but a playarnan. She fell in love with Merlin and granted him various wishes, because he saw on various occasions that she had abilities far beyond anything he could explain as a druid. One such wish was also the making of the Excalibur. Furthermore, Caridwena was very fond of Merlin because he did a lot of good for the human beings and was wise to a great extent. Caridwena also told him many things of the future, which she had fathomed through foresight. But Merlin then used these to ascribe them to himself and to mention them as prophecies. Unfortunately, however, Merlin was often fickle, which is why he also did things that went against good, which saddened and even enraged Caridwena, so that she finally ended the secret relationship with Merlin which nobody really knew anything about. When Caridwena was able to wield the Excalibur again after the death of King Arthur, she destroyed it and returned to Era. 
And the murder of King Gorlis? What role did Merlin play in that? The assassination was not in his mind. The kidnappers murdered the king of their own accord because he threatened them with the death penalty and also stood up to them. Contact Report 688 Time and again it is said on television, just recently again, that Emmanuel alias Jesus drank wine from a chalice together with the disciples during the so-called Last Supper, whereby this must have been very valuable. This chalice is said to have been preserved, but has disappeared to this day. It is assumed to have been found in various places in Jerusalem, but also in Greece, France, Spain, and England, where it is said to have been taken. The house where the Last Supper was held, which consisted only of bread, fruit, and wine, as I know, belonged to a wealthy Jew, which is why it is also assumed that the chalice was very valuable. For my part, however, I know that Emmanuel did not think much of ostentation, and therefore also avoided ostentatious drinking vessels, jewelry, and anything of value, for he was very modest in every respect. I also know that he and his disciples always carried their own small drinking pouches made of animal skins to quench their thirst on the way, while, when they were invited to a house, they took their libations from simple drinking bowls. As your father Sfath once explained to me, it was also like this at the evening meal, where small drinking bowls made of alabaster were used, which were about 10-12 centimeters in diameter and about 4 centimeters deep. Sfath once showed me one such drinking bowl that he received from his great-grandfather and cherished because it came from Emmanuel's group, he assured me. This small bowl is now in my possession, and indeed only such small drinking bowls made of alabaster were used at the Lord's Supper. That a chalice was used does not even correspond to a legend, but to an effective lie, which was already thought up and spread by early Christians. The truth is that the drinking bowls were alabaster bowls made in Italy in Volaterre, and brought by the Roman occupiers to Jerusalem, and also to all Roman-occupied territories. This already happened when Jerusalem was conquered by the Romans in 63 B.C. At that time, the alabaster drinking bowls were very popular with the Romans, although they were not of great value, and were also popularly used in small groups and circles in the occupied regions, so also by Emmanuel and his disciples. And how then did the lie that a cup was used in the Lord's Supper come about? About the lie that when Emmanuel was hanging on the cross, a cup was used to catch his blood, which never really happened. This tall tale led to the Grail legend, which is still circulating all over the world, also because in the course of time, various valuable chalices were fraudulently produced, which were given the nimbus, chalice of the Last Supper, and chalice of the blood, whereby two of these fraudulent chalices were produced in Europe. Sfath already explained this to me, as well as another grail story, though the actual grail is a place with a source. Good, then my question about Volaterre, was that a town? It was a town in Italy called Volaterre in Latin, which is now in the province of Pisa, region of Tuscany, and is called Volterra, and corresponds to a town of about 10,000 inhabitants. It is located about 50 kilometers south of Pisa, and about 50 kilometers from the Mediterranean Sea. Volterra is also still a center for alabaster processing, as it was in the 4th century BC, when the town was formed by the union of several small Etruscan settlements dating back to the 7th century BC. Contact Report 794 you have now, after all, dealt intensively with the Christian religion, and with the extent to which it is about truth or a fraud, concerning the alleged grail and the spear, which are supposedly connected with Emmanuel alias Jesus Christ, and which are today regarded and adored as sacred paraphernalia. Research, which has also involved time travel, clearly proved that the two objects have no connection whatsoever with what is claimed regarding what they are said to have served. 
Neither of the objects is therefore in any way connected with Emmanuel alias Jesus Christ. The claims are based on fraud, lies, and deceit. That is clear. Contact Report 802 But there are other things, such as that various places are mentioned where the so-called grail or the chalice is supposed to exist and be kept, from which Emmanuel drank wine at the so-called Last Supper. But as it is, mainly with Christians, they are lied to and deceived, especially with alleged relics that are attributed to Emmanuel, alias Jesus, as he was never actually called. So it is with the alleged grail or chalice, which he never had in his hand, just as he also never drank wine, because he did not like this drink. The grail, or cup, used in the circle of his disciples at that time was a simple stone bowl, but the disciple Philip, who was somewhat clumsily inclined, dropped it while taking his meal and broke it into three pieces. Consequently, the broken drinking bowl was discarded. So, since Emmanuel did not drink wine because he did not like it, and did not drink any throughout his life, he never had the drinking bowl in his hand. So the lie about the grail or chalice already begins there, which was followed by the deception and is maintained until today that the grail or chalice is kept there or thereabouts. The stupid believers are eager to take the nonsense of lies and fraud at face value and swear that they have seen the real grail or chalice there and then. This is because they have just been shown an object of deception, which will also continue to be so, because it is precisely the delusional belief in the earthlings that displaces all logic, reason, and understanding that he is so caught up in his delusion of belief that he remains stupid and thus cannot think for himself. What you are saying is what my daughter Sim Yase told me, for she was anxious to connect you with Emmanuel. Yes, she was, and thanks to her I know that there never was a grail or chalice that Emmanuel held in his hand or drank from. Leonardo da Vinci then also understood this after some explanations, when he created the painting Last Supper on behalf of Duke Sforza, and just left out the alleged grail or chalice. Contact Report 856 I am also very interested in what my daughter Sim Ya Se told me, what she did with you, how you gotta know the men catch, Duramke, Forestal and Area 18, as well as Gejat, Merlin and the foreigners working on Earth at that time, etc., and what they told you before the foreigners left, and the Earth humans known to you, were all murdered by the secret services of the USA.